Statistics and Excel, Poisson Distribution, Excel Function, and Graph. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. Here we First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But... But that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunchy numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. We are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet starting in a prior presentation. So you could go back there or you can open a blank worksheet from here and you should be okay as well. If you have access to this workbook, three tabs down below, example, practice, blank, example, in essence, answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can get to the heart of the practice problem. Blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet and are continuing with it here. Let's take a look at the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going. We've been talking about the Poisson distribution and we've been looking at different families of curves in a prior presentation looking at a uniform distribution. Now the Poisson distribution which could be useful to help give predictive power about certain data sets if certain conditions are met. We talked about some of those conditions in a prior presentation. We looked at the formula which you don't want to be too intimidated by because if we know the conditions that are met, we can use what we're gonna work on now, which is the Poisson.dist function. We'll then plot a graph, and then in future presentations, we'll use another kind of random generator tool that's a little bit more complex than we've seen in the prior presentations to generate some data that we can plot as well. So let's go to the blank tab. And so, like I said, we have this information from the prior presentation, but if you don't have it, that's okay. You can start uh, from just a blank worksheet. So we're gonna then just say our condition to be able to use the Poisson.dist is to have the mean, which we might have access to from prior uh, data. So oftentimes a Poisson distribution might be useful when you're looking at like say line situations and you're trying to determine how many people might show up in a, a given interval or what is the likelihood of so many people showing up within a certain interval. And so what we need then is the mean, which is often represented with our sigma or our lambda with the Poisson distribution, it's often the lambda. So I'm gonna be then entering the lambda, I'm gonna to go to the home tab, we're gonna to go to the, I'm sorry, insert tab, going into the symbols, I'm gonna make a symbol, and the lambda is right here because it's recently used. If you don't have it recently used, you can look under the Greek and Coptic to find your lambda. Let's insert it, and so there it is. I'm gonna say, close this, and then I'm gonna enter, and then go back into it, and I'm gonna put the equals next to it, and then in the cell to the right, I'm gonna say that that is 10. So we know what the mean is represented by lambda, and that's gonna be 10. I'm also gonna say the X number of rows, number of rows in our table. Uh, I'm gonna make it conditional. We'll start off with like 29 rows, and we'll use a little bit of a formula, and that'll help us to basically adjust our graph when we put our graph in place. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be X, and actually let's put it to the right here. I'm gonna put it to the right here. I'm gonna say this is gonna be X, and this is gonna be the uh, result of our formula, uh, which will be result here, okay. 
which I might, maybe I should put f of x. Let's say f of x here, okay. All right, let's center these. I'm gonna center these up top, home tab, alignment group, I'm gonna center it, and then we'll go into the font group. I'm gonna put this and make it black and white because it's a header, that's what we typically do with the headers. I'll select these two and just make them blue and bordered, which is what we often do for our other data input areas, home tab, font group, bordered, bucket drop down. if you don't have that blue, more colors, standard, there's the blue that I typically use. You can use whatever color you want. I'm gonna make the N a little bit skinnier, so we have a little bit skinnier of an N, holding control, scrolling in a little bit, so we'll zoomed in a bit. So I'll zoom in a bit more. And so, okay, so then the numbers, I just want this to be numbered from a zero down to 29. Now there's actually a formula for that, which could be useful when we're then gonna make a graph out of something, because then it could adjust the, the, the amounts that are picked up in the graph. So let me show you what I mean here. Instead of just doing this, which is what we will typically do in the past, which would be just say zero, one, two, and then using Excel to memorize the sequence. If I want this sequence to change, I can use a function and then pick up this number to change the sequence. So let's show you that. We're gonna say this equals sequence, uh, sequence, this is the formula. So there it is, and then I'm gonna say the number of rows is gonna be 29 plus one. You have to have the plus one because there's gonna be a zero in there as well. So we start at zero up to 29, which means there's 30 rows, but 29 plus the zero. And then the columns is going to be nothing in the columns because I have one column, so I could put a zero there or just two uh, commas to get to the next point. And then we're gonna be starting at not one, but zero, which I'll just hard code or type in. So I'm gonna say, okay, close that up and enter. And then it gives us our little spill down here, down to 29. Now, again, the reason that's nice in this case is because then I can change this to 30 and it'll then populate down to 30. I can, I can, in, I can decrease this to five and it'll give us uh, whatever result we want, which is great. Let's bring it back to 29. Now we'll use the Poisson function. So I'm gonna put my cursor in P2 and to put that in place, we're gonna say equals and then Poisson. So we want Poisson.dist, double clicking on that. The arguments we need are the X value, which is gonna be in this column. So in this case, zero, and then the mean represented by lambda 10 in this case. And then we'll talk about whether it be cumulative or not in a second. So we're gonna pick up X. So I'm just gonna pick up that zero, gonna say comma, and then, and by the way, we will go back into this in a second and represent X with an array. Uh, and that could be useful when we're graphing it. But for now, we're gonna pick up that uh, O2 and then comma, the mean is gonna be this 10. Now that 10, I don't want it to move when I copy it down. Therefore, I'm gonna select F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the M and the one. And then we're gonna say comma. Now it could be cumulative or not. So if it's cumulative, this will make more sense possibly when we look at the graph and we'll look at more examples shortly. But cumulative means it's gonna be all the results up to a certain point. Whereas uh, if it's not cumulative, you're just gonna get the results for one particular point. So you can type in true if you want it to be cumulative or, or false if the probability uh, mass function. We want it to be false, so I'm gonna just type in a zero. You can also type in a zero or a one, a zero for false and one for true. Closing it up and then enter. And so there we have this, I'm gonna then, then I could double click right here to copy it down to how many cells we have. You could make it a percent, home tab number percent, because that shows you a few more places out and then add a couple decimals. So uh, this is so this is what we have uh, as our results. And so what this is basically saying, we'll get into more examples in future presentations, is if you're in, for example, a line type of situation and you're trying to say, that X represents a, a time frame, say minutes, what's the probability that two people show up 
within the two minute time frame, something like that, and the probability being uh, 0.23 percent, right? And so when you're looking at the cumulative prob probability, then it would be adding up the probabilities of 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. We'll talk about more examples of that uh, in future presentations. For now, just note that one of the problems, if I'm not using like an array, is, is notice this, if I go down to 29, you get zeros after that point. Now, if I wanted to bring this back up to like five, notice that because I copied this side down, then it doesn't really, it doesn't shorten this column when I shorten this column. Whereas if I use an array, it will shorten it. So for example, if I put this back to 29 and let's redo this formula. So I'm gonna delete this whole thing and I'm gonna do it again, slightly different using our array. So I'm gonna say this equals Poisson.dist tab. And this time, instead of selecting that, just that cell, I'm gonna put my cursor there, hold control shift down arrow. That takes me to the bottom. If I wanna get back to the top, I can hold control backspace, takes me back to the top. Now I see an array in our formula is what we're doing here. And then I'm gonna say comma, the mean is still this cell, 10. I wanna make that absolute still. So I'm gonna say F4 on the keyboard and then comma, and this is still gonna be zero or false. Closing it up and enter. So now you can, you can see it populates with an array. Same results, but one of the benefits of doing it this way might be a little faster. Sometimes the arrays cause problems when you put tables in place, so there's pros and cons to them. But one pro is, one benefit is, if I put a five here, notice it changes the whole size of my, of, of both columns, which is kind of nice. So let's put it back to 29. And, and so then let's go ahead and graph this thing. So I wanna graph this. I'm gonna close this up a bit. Let's make this a little smaller. So I'm gonna select my data like so. And then I'm gonna go up top and say insert charts. And I wanna make basically just a bar. And so we'll put this in place. I'm gonna to have to adjust the data that it's picking up here. So I will then go into it here, chart design. I wanna select the data. Here's the data that it's picking up. Sometimes it's easiest just to delete these two and re-enter it. So I'm just gonna delete both of them uh, and say, just remove both, add a new data set. And I'm gonna say the series name that we want represented on the Y is going to be the f of x as the name. And I'm gonna pick up the data, putting my cursor on uh, P2, uh, holding down control shift down, which takes me to the bottom of the data set. Control backspace takes me back up, okay. And so there we have this. And then this data set, I wanna make sure that I have my own numbers in there instead of their numbers, right? So I'm gonna edit this data set and say, I want you to be picking up from this area, uh, control shift down, control backspace, and then enter. So now it goes up to 29 because that's how many numbers we have there and okay. So there we have it. And then I'm gonna say, boom, this is good. And then uh, let's just call this, let's just name this uh, poi, let's just call it up top. Poisson, Poisson, I hope that's spelled right again. <laughs> okay, and then, and then down here we have the X, so we could then say, okay, let's add the, uh, we could add the axis titles and say that this is gonna be uh, equal to F of X, and this is equal to uh, X. And then, so so there we have it. And you can see it looks kind of like a bell curve, but it's basically gonna be skewed a little to the right. Now, once we have this, then we can adjust this, this one number, the mean, and that's what's great about the Poisson distribution. That's what you, that's what you need to know in order to you know, populate the Poisson. And so I can then say, well, what if this was 
uh, what if this was three or something like that? You could see then it's you could see the skew a little bit more uh, in detail here. Now note that what's interesting is this still goes out to 29 because I told it to go out to 29 here, even though we have a lot of information that we might not need on that tail end, even though it's possible. Like if you're talking about a situation where where you're thinking about how many people might show up uh, in a given interval of time, it's possible for this number to go up to infinity, but obviously there's some kind of practical limit, right? So I could then change this and say, well, it looks like I can basically cut this off at maybe like 14. And so that's gonna adjust our graph down a bit. So if I look at our graph, notice it's still picking up the information down to here, but if I then adjust this up, I'm gonna say boom, and now our graph has been adjusted in terms of the X column, which is fairly easy to do. So let's go out further. Let's say this went out to like 70, and then I'm gonna, and then so, so now it populated uh, down to here. The spill uh, looks good, but I need to populate, I need to adjust the formatting of all these cells. Let's just paintbrush all of them and then make this one black and white and centered. So now, now it's going all the way down to 70 and you can see that actually populated automatically in the graph to pick it up to 70. So when I shrink it, it might not do it exactly uh, automatically, but you get the idea. And then if I bring this up to, if I, if I brought it down to like one or something like that, you could see that it kind of highlights the skew more. If I bring it up to five, you can bring it, it looks more kind of uh, bell shaped, but it's always going to be skewed a bit. So that looks pretty bell shaped, but there's generally gonna be a right uh, skew on it, which you could see more dramatically when uh, the mean is smaller here. So there we have it. So there's our, there's our, our general table with it. So now, uh, next time what we'll do is we'll use a, a random generation tool that still has a random element to it, but it's gonna be designed for randomness related to a Poisson uh, distribution. And we'll, and we'll just, so we'll generate that, which will simulate a situation that basically meets these conditions, still has randomness to it, but the idea is that it simulates randomness where these conditions are met and that random information that we get then should then if we plot it be similar to this outcome in a similar way as the uniform distribution you know the straight line distribution would be similar to something like rolling the dice that we talked about uh, uh, last time and that's the idea because now if we can see that relationship then we can possibly use a Poisson distribution to give us ideas about what to be expected in the future. Even though it's not perfect, there's still randomness to it, but it might give us that approximation where that could give us better decision-making capacity.